Live from America's heartland, this is the Daily Truth Report with your host, Noah Christopher. Welcome back to the Daily Truth Report. And joining us today is a first-time guest. You're going to want to put your seatbelt on and buckle up for this one uh, because it's going to it's going to be something wild, maybe something that a lot of you haven't uh, heard about before or haven't, if you've heard about it, you've never dug into it. So let me welcome onto the show uh, a really good guy. His name's Dave Weiss. He goes by Flat Earth Dave. And uh, Dave, we are really happy to have you on the show today. Welcome aboard. Noah, thanks for having the courage to have me on and lose all of your listeners. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's true. It's true. And, and, and it's, it's, this is the very first time we've talked about this topic on our show, but we are the Daily Truth Report. We follow truth wherever it goes, wherever it leads us. And this is a place that it's led me. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about my journey on this. And we're going to talk certainly about your journey. And, and we're just going to ask a lot of questions. We, we, we're going to try and open some eyeballs. And, and I'm here to say, I don't have everything figured out. I don't know for sure what the right answer is. But I, I will tell you, there's something here. And this is very interesting. And so uh, if we don't follow our mission to, to seek out the truth wherever we find it, then then we're going to have to change our name. So, uh, here, so here we go. Dave, go ahead. No, I, we have the same story. I was doing a conspiracy podcast. We are conspiracy analysts. I don't like the word theorists because we actually analyze the nonsense we hear on the news. And uh, we were bringing out the truth. And when Flat Earth was thrown at me, I refused to watch a one-minute video. I banned people from our social media for even suggesting that I look at it, okay? Because they're too dumb for my time. And then I was forced by another uh, researcher that I respect uh, to look and, and I went in with a closed mind. Um, you know, I, I normally go into a conspiracy. All right, let me see what this is. I went in that flat earth is stupid. I'm just going to prove it wrong. I'm going to prove the globe and be done with it. That was uh, 2014, 2015. And here I am today. I left my own very successful business um, to talk to people like you and spread this important word. And as we'll get into this, by the end, the people throw up their hands when you basically knock down everything they thought was a glow proof. They go, well, why the lie? How would they keep a lie? They can't even keep a BJ in the White House a secret, <laughs> right? And then uh, and they're like, well, why, what's, what does the shape matter? I still have to go to work. And um, as the day of this recording on my app, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, um, oh no, actually that's not today. It's coming up. There's a video called why, 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 why would they lie about the shape of the earth? I still have to go to work. And uh, <laughs> it'll blow your mind. It's really... Um, Truthful. So for those of you listening that think that I'm stupid, you can have three Bitcoins if you can give me one proof of the globe after taking the Flat Earth App Challenge or just taking the what I call my Crash Course Challenge, which is just a series of videos you can watch at FlatEarthDave.com. So Wow. Okay. okay. So we are recording this uh, uh, July 20th, 2022. And for the record, Bitcoin is about $23,000, $24,000 uh, per one Bitcoin right now. So uh, Dave has a challenge out there and we'll get into that more in a little bit. But uh, I, I want to set the stage really quick and, and you can see on the screen, it says Flat Earth Dave. You, we've, we've said the words Flat Earth. I, I want to throw another word out there that I, that I really like. And, and I, I heard this recently, really for the first time. And it's, it's a, a view of a biblical earth, the biblical earth model. And, and that's, that's where I'm coming from. And, and that's what has gotten my attention a lot on this. And maybe we can so, talk about that a bit as we go, Dave. But there is 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 dozens, if not hundreds, of references in the Bible to a still flat Earth, an unmoving Earth, and no references to us hurling through space. And when I started to look at that, and, and you start to read the Genesis account, and you start to realize, wait a second, if if I'm trusting the Bible as my as my guide for everything else, why am I not doing it here? So I, I, for anyone who is turned off by the word flat Earth, I want to sub in the word biblical earth and see see if see where that takes us as we go go ahead dave i want to substitute for flat earth and for biblical earth because there's many people that are turned off by the term biblical earth i would be one of those people years ago before i discovered flat earth because i'm like oh bible believers quran believers these are just religious fanatics and um i i discounted all of that stuff i basically could be described as an atheist at that time in my life which is absolutely ridiculous um but I rather call it true earth or level earth because flat is, isn't a shape, right? And it's, it's level. Um, you know, there's hills and valleys, but large bodies of water at rest lay flat, testably, measurably, scientifically, provably flat. And there's so much evidence of this, but people have just been um, not taught how to think and not understand what they're seeing, what perspective is, what the horizon is, horizontal 
right? Horizontal horizon. It's just where the angular size of where the sky meets the land gets so small that you can't see. Look over your head. The sky is however high you want to say the sky is. But in the distance, those clouds that are way over your head are merged into the horizon 20, 30 miles away. And so that's the limit of your vision. But if we zoom in on these things, um, we can see, see things. So um, I did a podcast called The Flat Earth Podcast, and my co-host, Matt Long, he came from the biblical side of the fence. He had all the biblical stuff, amazing. But I like to lead with the science, the observable, testable, scientifically provable facts that cannot be denied, and then say, oh yeah, and it's also in the Bible. There's over 200 proofs. This playlist right here, if you're a Bible believer or a Bible hater, you need to watch these videos, okay? Because they will show you things that you've never seen. You are surrounded by infinite number of doors with infinite possibilities behind them, and they've all been hidden for you um, in this heliocentric matrix. Dave, how do, how do they get to that screen that you have up there on your on your computer? <laughs> so so we'll, we'll uh, that all the all my links can be found at flat, flatearthdave.com. But on my app, if you just hit the web button, which is right there, it looks like a little spider web. You hit it. That's my more resources page, and then you scroll down. Up and down, there it is. It's on the third row on the left right there. And there's all sorts of stuff. Like our interview will be here. And uh, there's some great TikTok channels here. For those of you with a short attention span like me, um, check out these guys. They're amazing. And I'll be adding more because those are fast, fast bits. Like my YouTube channel, subscribe, D-I-T-R-H. It stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Again, it's linked at flatearthdave.com if you can't find it because YouTube still likes to hide these things. Um, all short videos. My videos are average three minutes long. OK, but I, I put out those short bits because you take a globe believer, flat earth hater, flat earth denier, and you say, oh, hey, watch this uh, our documentary on flat earth. They're gonna be like, Get the hell out of here. But if you show them a two minute video, then they'll watch a three minute video. Then they'll watch a seven minute video. Then they'll watch a five hour video. OK, and uh, those those videos will will wake you up. So all the resources are here. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. This page alone will keep you busy for years. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, Dave, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Your journey is similar to mine at that uh, I, I didn't, none of us grew up thinking about this or looking into this. We all grew up with the globe in the classroom at school. It was one of those things, you know, the grass is green, you know, the sky is blue and you know, the earth is a, is a globe because we've all seen it. And we've all seen the pictures of NASA that uh, for some reason all look different, but we've seen those pictures. And so no one questions it until you do. And I, my, my story was I, I heard about this and I, and, and I thought, well, that's, that is just ridiculous. What, how could anyone spend more than five minutes on this topic? And so I just, I watched one or two videos and I couldn't believe that the more I watched, the more I realized, wait a second, this isn't crazy at all. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if all of it's true. I, I don't know necessarily all the math behind it, but, but there's a lot here. This is not just there, you know, you see a lot of memes out there and, and they're funny and they mock everything. But, but when you look into this, uh, there's a lot of meat here. Um, so there is, there's an endless amount of meat. And here's the thing we're going to, I'm going to kind of jump forward. People go, what are the stars? My answer is, I don't know. The only thing we can say about the sun, moon and stars is that they're lights in the sky. That's the only definitive thing we can say, but what we can prove is what they're not. Okay. And so we're, that's jumping forward a little bit. I can prove that the sun and the stars are not the sizes and distances they tell us. I, we can prove that um, scientifically. And once people wrap their minds around that, then, um, then they'll start to say, okay, well, that's a lie. And then everything else unwinds from there. Once you find one heliocentric lie, the entire, the entire house of cards comes, comes down. Here's all the pictures from NASA. Which one uh, do you like? Right? <laughs> or maybe, the, maybe these are different. I think, I think these are all NASA. Um, they're horrible. They're, they're, they don't make any sense. Look at the United States here and here. It's like three times the size. Look at the colors. Absolute the colors. insanity. Yeah. And I believe, um, you can't see it on this one, but I have a high res. On this one, they left the cloning stamp tool from Photoshop in there. It's, it's absolute insanity once you, once you start to understand um, how big this deception is. Well, and, and that's what we wanted to do. So I want to spend some time talking about stuff like this day and just taking one thing after another. But um, just on a real high level, this is one of the things that, it, it, that you're going to discover right away when you get involved that, that look at these images. Number one, 
these are supposed to all be uh, images from NASA, but when you read the, the caption on them, they say they are composite images, which means they were made in a computer. They are not, it's not like you take your iPhone and, and point it and shoot and you get a picture. That's even NASA admits that's not what these are. You have up on the screen where it shows that they've just cloned and edited, just like copy and paste in Microsoft Word. They've just added clouds and copied and pasted them. They're identical. Look at the sizes of the different continents. They're, they don't line up. How do you, how does that happen in a picture? Right. From and and also you're 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 using NASA terminology, image and and picture. They never say photograph because a picture could be a painting, an image could be a drawing. Also, right, a photograph is a photograph. They don't like to lie. They tell us the truth, and people don't hear it. Right, image and pictures are not photographs. NASA will never say, "Here's a photograph of Earth. Here's a photograph of another planet. Here's a photograph of a satellite in space." They will only say image. Interesting. Yeah. Well, well, let's uh, let's just take another one, Dave. What 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 are if we had a top ten list of, of things that people might encounter when they start digging into this? What are some other ones that they that they might run into that that would just be almost painfully obvious that something's not right here? Well, for, first of all, let, let's let's just jump back a little bit and um, let me see if I have an image here. Is to understand what flat Earth is. Right, what flat Earth isn't right? They want you to believe. Whoops, I thought it would work. Sometimes when I plug this in, um, some some of the images will not um, will not load. So let's go here. Where is it? Um, you know what? I'm gonna have to do it another way. So when when you think of flat Earth, when you think of flat Earth, let's do it this way. When you think of flat Earth, um, you think of a disc floating in space because that's what you were programmed to believe, right? That's what you were programmed to believe, that this is flat Earth. If you Google flat Earth, you get this. Mm -hmm. No flat Earther thinks that this is ridiculous. This is mixing a fake flat Earth theory, well, which is not ours, in with a fake heliocentric solar system theory. You got two fake things to choose from, this fake one or that fake one, you know, mm -hmm. Republican or Democrat. Which one do you want? And they're both complete and total nonsense, right? So what, what is the flat Earth, right? You know, when you Google flat earth, you know, you get this, right? And then, then, then you'll laugh at flat earth and never look at it again, right? So what is, what is flat earth? Um, flat earth is like a pond, right? Think about a pond. A pond is a body of water. It's flat. And what holds the water in? The edges? The edges of the pond. Why? Because they're higher or lower than the water. Yeah, higher, right. Of course. So that, so water needs a container. If you have a glass of water and get rid of the glass, the water's gone. A tub of water, get rid of the tub, the water's gone. A pond, get rid of the edges of the pond, the water's gone, right? A lake is a bigger pond. It's flat. The oceans of the world create a, um, a giant lake, okay? So the oceans of the wall create a giant lake and Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It's not a continent at the bottom of the ball. It's the land that surrounds our lake and it's the highest land on earth. Well, that makes sense. Antarctica is the shoreline of our world pond. Okay. So people go, oh, what happens if you go to the edge of the earth and fall off, right? <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what they want you to think, right? Nobody, nobody uh, you know, thinks that. Um, if you Google Antarctica from space, you get just cartoons, right? Mm -hmm. There's no image. Now, there are bases along the shoreline of Antarctica off of Santiago, Chile. I believe there's one off of New Zealand, perhaps. Um, but they don't give you the impression, you know, that it's really set up like this. So people go, well, if you go to the edge of the earth, you know, how come you're not going to fall off? Um, and the answer is because you're going to the edge of a lake. If you sail to the edge of a lake, would you fall off the lake? No, you wouldn't fall off. You get to the edge. And when you get to the edge, well, Antarctica is raised up. It's frozen. It's the shoreline of our world. People will show me a picture of the ice wall. Well, here's some pictures and some video. Okay. And good. Dave, most people or some people may not be aware of this, but uh, there's, there's an Antarctic treaty that, that I believe almost every single country in the world is a party to, you know, meanwhile, we're having wars all over the place. We can't agree on anything else, but we've all agreed to this Antarctic treaty that says no one can go there. Right. In 19, uh, 1959, Admiral Byrd said he went beyond the, the poles and saw land bigger than the United States. Well, that's a problem on a globe. How do you go beyond the poles, right, to unknown lands? And um, it's filled with resources, fuel, everything we need. 
and nobody's there. No plants, no animals, no people. Wow, sounds like a dreamland. Just go, you know, and uh, the oh, Antarctic Treaty, a dozen countries signed on, and now every major country in the world is signed on. Um, and you can't question it until the year 2041. Well, look what's going on in the world. We're running out of gas, running out of this, running out of that baloney, right? Um, how come these uh, Exxon Mobil doesn't petition to have this, the longest treaty in the history of known, of known history um, dissolved so they can, you know, get lower gas prices, you know? And uh, no, no one's going to do that because they know that's not really what's going on. Right. Why, so, why, and and, and this, this is the kind of stuff that, that really started to get my attention. That's a that's a fact, Dave. I mean, that's that is that treaty exists. That is not that's not uh, a conspiracy theory. That's not a uh, someone went somewhere and said something. That's been a treaty that's been in existence for decades. And meanwhile, we're at war with Russia and everybody else. But but we can agree on this. And why is it so important to protect frozen tundra? It, it, because of the animals there, it, it makes but no sense. There's no animals there except the penguins. And, um, you know, the penguins actually prove the earth is flat by where they're lo located else in the world. I mean, I could show you that in a little bit. But um, there's uh, 60 degrees south, which is still, I don't know, it's over a thousand miles from Antarctica. You can't even see it. You're not allowed to go there um, without, and, uh, without being permitted or going on one of these uh, highly expensive tours, you know, supervised tours where you just go to that little island off of Santiago. These fishmen, fishermen tried to cross it and this destroyer um, showed up. <laughs> and, and, and literally, you know, came down upon them, sent a drone out to them and um, told them that they have to immediately turn around. They're in restricted waters and and turn them around because there no one's allowed to go there. Now, think about this. The guys that are that are on this ship, they're soldiers. They're, you know, you know, Marines, whatever you want to call them. They're order followers. They are the prisoner guards for their own prison and they don't even know it. OK. They don't even know it. They're just following orders without wondering, like, why are we protecting this supposed wasteland? And the answer is because, you know, Antarctica could be something completely different, right? What if the world was set up like this? I'm sure you've seen this map. We live here. This ring is Antarctica. And out here in the outer space is more land, extra land, extra territory, extra terra. If somebody lived out here, they might be considered an extraterrestrial from the outer mm. space. <laughs> okay. Interesting. And 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 Dave, what you what you said about Admiral Byrd, this this again, this is a fact. So you can draw different conclusions from it, but this is a high-ranking admiral, Admiral Byrd, who led an expedition to the uh, to the alleged South Pole to Antarctica, and he claims to have crossed through it and found extra land. That, at least that part is historical record. Is that correct? That is correct. And when he did his news conference, um, he was sitting in front of a flat earth map with a clock on it. Wow, okay? look at that. The sky is a perfect clock. The hour hand is the sun, okay? It keeps track of the hours. It goes around once every 24 hours. You know what they said? Hey, let's give this uh, round of civilization clocks, but we'll make it spin around twice a day so they never figure it out. Okay, <laughs> the clock, the sky is a perfect clock. Um, and Admiral Byrd, you know, some people you know, we could theorize all day. We don't know he's gone. Uh, did he die of a heart attack mysteriously after he made this announcement, or did he disappear on one of his missions, going to the outer lands, going, you know what, this is paradise out here. I'm not going back to tyranny, and he disappeared into the outer lands. Who knows? Is he dead? I don't know. Was it controlled uh, release or did he accidentally release it? I don't know. <laughs> but 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 it's really important to establish that that this is not an, an internet rumor. This is not a video someone made now in in, in 2022. This is a historical video from a, an admiral in the U.S. Navy, Admiral Byrd, who who had this transcript, and and that's all fact. Now, was he wrong? I don't know. Was did he see well, something that was was mistaken? I don't know, but it's a historical record, and and I really like to anchor there because it's important for people to understand. We're we're not coming at this from no basis, right? So here's an, another thing. You know, Admiral Byrd, um, you know, made that announcement that that thing happened. Also, there's books. There's a book called The Iron Republic. I highly recommend people uh, check it out. But it's right here in the book section. Scroll down a little bit. The Iron Republic. Um, amazing book. And there's another one, The Navigator Who Crossed the Ice Walls. Um, the, the Iron Republic, though, was, was written in uh, 
1899 or published in 1901 in Florida Magazine. It was a series of articles first about a guy that left, um, got tired of politics here. He was a politician in New York and got a ship and went to Antarctica, went through one of those fissures and ended up in the outer, it lost at sea for a couple months, found land, found a city, and it was its advanced city. In 1901, 1901 there, he was talking about, you know, tablets, you know, flat screens and floating cars and all of this technology that didn't exist back then, according to history, um, in this advanced civilization. And he ended up staying there for years. He got married and his wife died. He got so distraught, he actually got his ship back and went back and came back and told the story here. Whether it's true or not, it rings true to me. Um, it doesn't matter. They were talking about more land beyond Antarctica, right? This wow. whole idea that we've known the Earth as a ball for 2,000 years because of Aristophanes and his nonsense trick, um, <laughs> that he, um, that it is ridiculous because they were teaching flat earth here into the mid 1900s. Okay. In public schools, they were still teaching flat earth here. They changed our books. The Rockefellers, the bankers, you know, supply all of the schools, which they keep very poorly funded. And they give them textbooks printed by the bankers to teach you how to be good banking customers, not how to be bankers. And they sell them to the schools at um, a quarter of whatever it costs to make them. So no other competing educational book company could ever compete because let's say the uh, you know i made an amazing textbook and i sold it for cost well it'd be four times more expensive than the rockefeller's books okay yeah, so so that's how and that's how they they control the school boards they control everything and the, everything is like nope you have to use this you have to do this here's the curriculum you must teach this in kindergarten one story i always tell is in kinder it was in kindergarten or first grade i'm not sure we're out and they take us outside and they're teaching us about gravity and the teacher swings a bucket of water around on a rope and says that's gravity. And I had the wherewithal to say, if that's gravity, but the earth is a ball and the water's on the outside, wouldn't you have to turn the bucket over? And the teacher goes, huh? And he scratches his beard and he goes to get the book and he goes, well, this is the way they teach it to me and tell me to teach in the book. So this is how I'm going to teach it. You just go along and play. And I went over and played. I got on a swing and I had a good time. Okay. But, but that kind of made me realize that that teachers are just following orders. They're order followers. They're the ones that can memorize and regurgitate the nonsense the best. So getting, we're getting back to your point about um, the Antarctic Treaty. Um, in the frequently asked questions section, there is under Antarctica. And if we scroll down, there's a video called, sorry, Antarctica is closed right here. Bam, sorry, Antarctica is closed. Won't be able to find that easily, even if you search for it by name. Um, although it's mirrored on a ton of channels, that YouTube is hiding this information from you, right? So don't believe, you know, the, the best global argument is what are you believing of videos on YouTube? YouTube is a platform where you can put absolute nonsense and absolute truth side by side. You have to use your God-given common sense and discern what's true. One of our flat earthers, great researcher and a lawyer did all of the research, looked into all of the permits and made the phone calls and contacted the people and emails and spent, I don't know, he probably spent a year putting this together, um, this 35, 30, I think it's 30 minutes, 35 minutes um, documentary on what the Antarctic Treaty is and how it can't be, um, how you can't go explore Antarctica. If you wanted to explore Antarctica and you had the means, it's going to take you a year or two in permits. It's going to cost you up from 200000 to $2 million in in permit submissions and then when they deny you they keep the money okay <laughs> and so, even watch, then, so wait, so ever... la wait last thing watch the video and then go verify it yourself don't believe anything i say go verify what i'm saying and i'm showing you that the app is the best way to find this stuff you could you could find this no you probably can't find it yourself but if you spend 500 hours researching flat earth you're probably going to find two hours worth of good content maybe okay if you're 498 hours, um, did I say five? Yeah, 400 and uh, whatever. Yeah, 498 hours is not worth the three dollars of the app. Then maybe truth isn't for you. Well, I, I love what you said. Don't don't take anything that we're saying as truth. And I'm here to say I, I'm I'm the host. I'm I'm investigating. I'm asking questions. I find this wildly interesting. It feels like there's something here. I know when when you're on a story and when you're you're tracking something that's real versus when you're not. So. I'm interested, but Dave says, don't take anything that he says for truth. And, and, and I, I agree with that. I, I, I mean, don't take it blindly, go investigate, listen to what he's saying and go investigate yourself. But Dave, Dave's mentioned a couple of times, he's got this app and it's up on the screen. And he, I think he mentioned, you can get it for $3. 
Um, that's you go to flatearthdave.com and that's where his app and, is. And, and what he's done is he's basically just organized all of this stuff and put it on there. So um, we're doing, we're, we're going to talk, keep talking about this. And if you want to buy it, great. If you don't want to buy it, that's fine. But um, Dave's here to spend his time and, and talk about this for free. So, um, but, but if, if, if you hear, he keeps talking about this app, that's where you find it. Well, the reason I'm talking about the app, because it, it, just go, don't buy the app. Just go read the reviews. Go to flatearthdave.com and take the crash course. That's free. Okay. Um, but just go read the reviews on the app and you'll end up getting the app because you're going to want more information and you don't know where to find it. And it, this is literally it brings it all together. Um, there's new stuff being added every day, but this is just the flat earthers near me. And this is oh, called wow. the friend finder on the app. You can, I can tap on a dot and I could send that person a message. Um, or I could say, you know, I got it set for 50 kilometers. I can send out a message to 420 people and say, Hey, I'm having a meet up at Rico's bar and grill Saturday at four <laughs> o'clock. And then hundred people show up. Wow. And now, now you have new friends. Um, this is basically being used as a dating app now, because guess what? <laughs> flat earthers don't want to be with people that think the earth is a globe. We have the advantage though, because if you find somebody we really, really like, and that's smart, you can teach them about flat earth, but a glober can never convince a flat earther that the earth is a globe because we've already seen that it's not. Okay. We've already changed our mind based on new information. Globers just haven't seen that information or, or just are denying um, what they're seeing. So, Again, this is, a, this is a, a truly amazing part of the app, and it's actually about to get much better. Right now, it's just simple texting to each other. I'm going to make it video links, vo voice chatting, video chatting, group chatting. Um, it's going to be amazing. That's coming out, hopefully, by the beginning of August. Oh, that's, that's very cool. And, and that, that's one thing I want to mention, too. It reminds me, just looking at that screen. Yeah, I know when we post this, there's, I'm going to get a lot of comments that say we've gone crazy. I'm never listening to you again. What are you thinking? But I also know that there's going to be a lot more people that have looked into this before than you might expect. And there's going to be a lot of comments that say, finally, you're talking about it. We've, we've been on this for five years or 10 years, and I'm glad to see you're catching up because Look, those dots represent a lot of people, and they're just not very vocal about it, but they're out there. Well, so here are the people that are becoming vocal, all of these blue dots. Look at the United States. This is insane. And it's just starting. Okay. A lot of people that have the app don't even know about the friend finder. Okay. Look at the UK. I mean, if you think flat earth is a fad, you are mistaken. It's okay to be mistaken because we were all mistaken. I was a globe believer like everybody else until 2014, 2015, when I started looking into it. And the best way to prove the globe is not real and flat earth is real is try to debunk flat earth or better try to prove the globe, right? Try to prove the globe. It, it, it's crazy what's going on. I mean, look, look at Florida. Florida is crazy. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Well, what you just said there, Dave, that's, that's so, so interesting because it, it, a, lot of, a lot of things go like that. You know, I, I don't know if you know the name Lee Strobel, but he was a famous journalist who, who was, was kind of like you when you started out, uh, atheist, agnostic, um, didn't believe anything in the Bible, didn't believe Christianity. And then, and then he said, I'm, I'm going to set out, I'm going to write the, the best book to debunk this. And the more he started studying, he was totally converted. And he said, there, is, there are mountains of evidence in support of this, and I, I can't find much against it. And, and, and that journey has, has been repeated by so many people. And it's the same journey that I see here, which is why I look at this and I say, I see a lot of similarities. There's something going on here. There's been a story that, that's being pushed very hard in these classrooms with these globes and with the NASA images. But when you, when you set out to try and either prove their model or, or disprove the craziness of flat earth or biblical earth or, or true flat earth, true, true uh, 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 flat plane earth, you find out that, that there's a lot more here and, and, and you end up going on the journey that Dave went on. And now, now he's got this app on the screen with him and he's spending his time doing this because he realizes it's important. So I, I just find that interesting. Uh, Dave, before we go on to the next one, I, I had two things I wanted to circle back on and follow up with that I thought were, were so interesting. You said back in as late as the eight, late 1800s, early 1900s, schools were, were teaching this, this flat earth model. Now, not the bogus model you see in the memes that we talked about, but this, this, this true, true uh, concept shown in the map behind Admiral Byrd shown in, oh, by the way, the United Nations logo, uh, that's a flat earth map. And yep. this was being taught in schools as late as the early 1900s. And the more you go back, you know, Rob Skiba was, was uh, I think he was a, a, a friend of yours and, and I, I never got to know him, but I, I watched a lot of his videos and just a great guy. 
um, he was always famous of saying, you remember the game telephone when, when you, or he called it whisper down the line when, when one person would start out with a message and you, you'd whisper it in the ear to the person uh, all the way down the line. And then the message at the end would come out totally different from, from the message when it started. And it was always funny to hear how it had changed. But the farther back in time you go, you start looking back at, at the, uh, you know, the, the, the societies living in biblical times. And even before that, they all had this model of a, of a still flat earth. And, and you look at, uh, there's a guy, um, I don't know if you may know the name, Michael Heiser, but a, a brilliant researcher, uh, 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 languages mostly. He, he uh, translates uh, biblical Hebrew and works for Logos uh, Bible software. He did at one time. And they put out, they said, you know, we're going to dig into all of the uh, language in the Bible. And what, you know, just what does it tell us? What do, the, what do the Hebrew words tell us? What do the ancient words tell us? And he, he said, without a doubt, un, it, 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 really without any uh, argument whatsoever, it tells the story of a stationary, still, flat earth. And he said, he said I, don't, I don't ascribe to that, but I'm telling you, that's what, that's what the text says. Right. So the Bible has over 200 verses talking about a flat, stationary, non-moving earth. Only in, in Isaiah, I think it is, it says the circle of the earth. Well, a pond can be a circle. A pizza is a circle. A circle is a circle. It's not a sphere. And they, other places in the Bible, they talk about spheres. So they know the difference between a sphere and a circle. Um, if you lo haven't looked into mud floods or Tataria yet, um, our, all of our history is a lie. The 1800s, there was a worldwide civilization. Some people call it Tataria. Um, and it was an advanced civilization with crazy stuff. I mean, like insane. And all of that has been hidden. There was some sort of reset that happened. Um, and, and then the world was, uh, you know, somewhere in the 1800s, late 1800s is my guess. Um, and we dug out of it. You know, the transcontinental railroads weren't built. They were excavated out of the mud. Okay. Hmm. They're here. And every city, there's proof of this. There's buildings that are underground. There's so much. There's, there's another building under our Capitol building, okay, that's buried in mud from before Christopher Columbus discovered, allegedly discovered America. But um, as far as the, the, the um, true history, so this is Ruth. I met her 102 years old uh, back in February 2020, just before the nonsense started in the world. And I was interviewing her about the world's fairs. And her memory was so good. I said, where'd you go to school? She's like, well, Hampton, Connecticut, you know, so-and-so public school. And I said, um, what did they teach you in science about the earth? That's all I said. And she goes, they taught me the earth was flat. And I said, but wow. then what? She goes, well, then years later, they changed it, you know? And, uh, and I was like, did you believe them? She's like, well, I guess, you know, but it didn't seem right. And I told her um, that the earth is flat and that, uh, that we are at the center of creation. And she literally broke down in tears. Um, it was a crazy, amazing interview. And it went viral. And um, wow. So we were talking about it with lots of people. I'm like, hey, we don't have time. There's not much time left. There's only a couple of years left to, to speak to these um, centenarians, you know, people that are over um, 18, over, over 100 years old. And uh, everyone was getting ready to go to old age homes. And then, bam, the spooky bug came and all old age homes were, are off limits. Nobody can go. Oh, how about that? Coincidence. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's a story I had not heard before, Dave. That is, that is very interesting. Hey, be, be, so, you got something on the screen here. Before we get to that, what, just one more loose end to tie up. We, you had the map of the, uh, uh, of the flat earth uh, up on your screen, or at least a model of what, of what people think it might look like. Again, that yeah. same map that is the United Nations logo. Again, just a coincidence. But yeah. uh, what, I, what I find interesting is, is uh, you had a story about as a kid, uh, things not making sense. I always wondered, uh, why, does, why does the compass only point to north? You know, it, it's, I, it, compass is a magnet, right? So, I mean, couldn't we program it to, you could have one that points to south. Well, you can't have one that points to south if south is everywhere on the edge of the border rim, can you? Because where do you point to? You can only point to north in the center. Again, all, it may, I, I may just not be smart enough to understand. I had readily admit that. So, no, one, here's the thing. We've been trained to defer our common sense, God-given common sense, to a bunch of nonsense given by a guy in a bow tie wearing a lab coat. If you have the, the we call it the, the coat of, um, the lab, the coat of, I don't know, some, uh, the, <laughs> it makes you smart. If you, like, literally, we have guys doing street activism, and when they put on a doctor's lab coat, more people listen to them. It's so <laughs> stupid, right? So here's the United Nations, right? Flat Earth map, where's Antarctica? Interesting. And then um, right. you got the, the World Meteorological um, Organization, 
same map. What's going on that. there? Then you got the International Civil Aviation Organization. These are the organizations that run the world. Okay, flat Earth map. Where is it? What's going on? Right. And then you have the flat Earth map. Okay, and all of them are great. We have people. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Nope. Sorry. Well, they're all based off of that. Okay. Absolutely. It's, it's absolutely insane. And then, you know, this is, um, have you seen, I showed this a minute ago, this is in Africa, the United Nations building in Africa. What the hell is going on there? Hmm. That's the United Nations building in Africa. <laughs> Looks like a bunch of sixes to me, if you, if you know anything about the, their numerology. Yeah, it looks like the CERN logo. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't even get started on that one. <laughs> Crazy, right? Wow. Yeah. Well, so, please, so, please take... Take, take us on another one, Dave. You had something else up on the screen, and, and I just want to hit as many of these as we can just to start. Well, let's, let's talk about rolling. circumnavigation. Let's talk about yeah. circumnavigation, right? So on a ball with a magnetic north and a magnetic south, how the hell does the compass work? It has to be level. And how come compasses in the south don't point to the south pole? Get a pole magnet, a north and south ends on it, and get a magnet, get a compass. If the compass, the needle will point to the, the magnet, I think it will, um, but it doesn't point to the south. There's no magnet, there's no compass. Even if there is a south magnet, I don't think there is, um, that it won't point to it. It only points to the north because we don't have a south pole. We don't have a south pole. So how does it work, right? We live in a lake. This was a lake, right? And all of these islands are the continents, right? At the center of the lake, we have our magnetic north. Okay, so I got a magnet here and I got a compass and I'm trying to push the compass west. I'm trying to push the compass west. Um, and I have to keep turning it because mm. it, it's, li it's lined up with the north. Okay, and if I try to push it east, I have to keep turning to keep my north facing north. East is a circle. West is a circle. Okay, right. And, and that's true on a flat earth and a globe earth. It doesn't prove either. But if I try to dead reckon west, that means I'm not going to correct. I'm going to take off and I'm going to go straight. I'm heading south immediately. South is every direction away from the center. This is south. This is south. This is south. This is south. Right? Nobody has circ circumnavigated south. If I went from Santiago south on a globe, I should pop up over here in Australia. But no mm. one's ever done it. Because when you go south, you just go away. South oh, no. and north are straight lines. East and West are circles. They never taught you that in school because you might figure out that the earth is flat. Wow, right? flat is I'm going flat. North, 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 North. Oops. Now I'm going South, right? So <laughs> the compass just did 180. Every straight line is South. Every straight line is South. Wow. Hey, go, hey, go back to that map for a minute, Dave. This, this is another one that we talked okay. about. We talked about, you know, things that just never made sense when we were kids, but I, I, I remember flying on airplanes and, and you know, sometimes they, they show you those animations of, hey, this is our flight flat path and here's where we're going. And I, you, you think, okay, we're going from point A to point B, you draw a straight line. The plane never flew in a straight line. It always had this huge arc to it. And, you know, it'd be like you're going from Florida to California, but you cross through, I don't know, Iowa or something in this big arc. Well, why are we doing that? And the, the answer was always, oh, you know, it's, it's all of these winds and, and, and everything that we have to go, go by. But why the big arcs every time you're flying in a straight line? Well, well, hold on. You don't fly in a big arc. They show you a big arc, right? Yes. They show you like, oh, I'm going to go like this, right? On the globe. But in reality, it's a straight line on a flat earth. Why the hell would you fly all the way up to, um, to, to Los Angeles and then down to Peru when you could just fly straight to Peru? These people want to go to Peru. Well, that's because Los Angeles is on the path to Peru. Look at that. It's a straight line. And there's many, many, many examples of these where these southern flights will cross the equator to go to places that should be closer if you just went in the south. Any southern location to any other southern location should never have to cross north of the equator. And the same is true for the north. If I wanted to go anywhere in the north to any other place in the north, I would never go below the equator, no matter what the combination is. And guess what? No flight does. There's no flight from a northern location to another northern location that crosses the equator, but there's tons of southern locations going to other southern locations that decide to go up across the <laughs> equator, right? Makes this is perfect. 
this is so good. This is the kind of stuff that, that we, don't, we don't have to get deep in the weeds of math or anything else, but just look at that image on the screen and say, it, this doesn't make sense. Right. Makes no sense at all. Makes perfect sense on a flat earth. And here, and people go, well, they're, 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 they have to go because there's other passengers. They have to go pick up other passengers and change crew. You can make excuses all day long, but what you can't make excuses for <clears throat> is when there's an emergency. When there's an emergency on an airplane, someone has a heart attack, having a baby, whatever it is, they got to land immediately. So here's a trip from New York to Hawaii. Right about here, there was an emergency. He's still there. I'm hearing some weird noise. You good? No, I got you. You're good. There was an emergency, and they went 1,000 miles out of the way, whatever distance this is, to Seattle. And they got there really fast, like 15 <laughs> minutes. Like, how did they get there? Well, look at Seattle, New York. Seattle's right there. They were right over wow. Seattle when it happened. Okay? Right? So let's, let's look at another one. Right? And again, don't believe these memes I'm showing you. Go research them yourself, and I'll show you where you can. This one, emergency, they went to Moscow. That is huge distance, right? Moscow's right on the flight path, okay? Look at that. Here's another one. Here's another one. Um, check out this one. Dallas um, to landing in Calgary, Dallas to Beijing, right? Calgary, what the <laughs> hell? Look at Calgary. It's right there. It's on a straight line. Airplane, plane, airplane. Flies over the Earth plane, not air globe, sea level, not sea curve. Okay. And Dave, how 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 fast is the alert? Is the Earth in in the globe model? How fast is it spinning? Um, I'll answer that real <laughs> real quick. Another one, endless. There's 16 of these emergency landings, and guess what? I've done the work. Not I. Um, Eddie uh, Flat Earth Banjo has done the work for you. He created this book. 16 emergency landings. You can buy it on lulu.com or it's free online. Just go Google it. There's a PDF and all of the research has been done for you. All of the facts, the flight routes, the times, what happened, where they landed um, and the stupid excuses that the media gives, even if they do address it, which they mostly don't. Um, it's all laid out. This book should be in schools. This is a textbook proving the earth is flat. Okay. Proving. It's a great coffee table book, by the way, because if you put it on your coffee table and then somebody comes over and picks it up, and reads one page, they become a flat earther, right? <laughs> that, that's, so, that's so perfect. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about when I started looking into this. You get to some of this stuff pretty quick and you start looking at it and saying, well, wait a second, I, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And, but it does make sense on this other model. And, and then you just keep going, but, but perfect example. It's in the app also, by the way, under the book section, if you forget the name, 16 emergency landings, not too hard to forget. Um, and um, there you go. So what was you, you asking another question? I was about to go somewhere else. Um, oh, well, well, um, in the globe model, how, the earth is spinning pretty fast. How, how fast is it spinning? And wouldn't that make landing airplanes awfully hard if you had to calculate for, for a spinning earth, whether you're coming in from the north, south, east, or west? Do you have to, do you have to account for that? And I, and I don't think they do. So we're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. That's faster than the speed of sound. At the equator, it's 1,000. It's less as you go north. That's another issue. Um, think about that. The equator is going around once a day. It's just over 24,000 miles around. So you're moving at 1,000 miles an hour to make it around in one day. But if you're up in Alaska and you only go around once a day, you're making a much smaller circle, smaller than the circumference of this circle. It's a much smaller circle. So you're still going around once a day, same angular speed, but your linear speed is much less. It's like 300 miles an hour, right? And, and so... If you were on a, a, um, a helicopter, let's say, or even an airplane, you're sitting on the runway in Alaska, you're moving at 300 miles an hour. You take off and you fly to Ecuador and you want to land on a north-south oriented runway that's moving sideways at 1,000 miles an hour. <laughs> How do you gain that extra speed to land on this moving runway? It's absolute insanity, right? This is your, not yours, but this is Glover's. This is your model. You're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. You're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour. You're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, but nothing can be measured. The stars never change. Go out tonight, take a picture of the stars at a certain time, put a note in your calendar to do the same thing, same night, next year, same time. And every star will be in the exact same place, even though we're a four and a half billion miles from where we were the year before. And now all the other stars are moving around like bees in a friggin' beehive. Um, nothing ever changes. Absolute ridiculous insanity. Just keep, to keep that demonstrate. Up, keep, that up, keep that up for wait. a second, Dave, because that is okay. so cool. Yeah. Okay. So, good. 
Well, no, I, I, you really hit on something big with the stars because you want you 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 learn in school or you go out camping sometime and you look up and and they got all these constellations and 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 the constant you can draw them and connect the dots and they form different things. How are those in the same spot? How do we have the North Star in the same spot every time? We just had the Georgia Guidestones that that were <clears> taken <throat> down. And by the way, that's another conspiracy theory that came out to be true, but those just came down and they had a little spot in there that, and you could probably explain it better than I can, but they had a little spot where a certain uh, a star or light would come through at the exact same point every time. How does that work in, in this model that you have on the screen? Wouldn't those stars be moving that you, you <clears> never <throat> see the same one twice? This little hole right here showed Polaris, right? We're corkscrewing. You shouldn't be able to see it for a minute. By the time they were done drilling that hole, it should have moved. But it's been up for over 40 years. So the heliocentric ridiculous dumb argument is, oh, it's so far away that you don't notice any parallax, you know? Um, even though we're moving billions of miles a year for eon after eon, um, that it, it's too far away to notice any movement. That's stupid, ridiculous, and scientifically provably impossible because we'll, 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 we'll let, remind me to talk about Polaris and how you can't see it. Um, and so it's still there. But the other thing is they say, well, we didn't always have Polaris as a North Star. 2,000 years ago, we had Thuban, and 2,000 years from now, whatever, we're going to have another star because the Earth is wobbling, right? The axis is wobbling. So great. So, so the, the, the pyramids were built in, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, and they have a shaft that points towards Polaris, but they say when they built it, it was pointed towards another star. So we happen to live in the time when it's just coincidentally pointing to another star that we call the North Star. That's absolute made up ridiculous insanity. Okay. And then the Georgia Guidestones, now they were built 40, uh, 41, 42 years ago, and they're pointing towards Polaris. Well, that whole procession thing says it should have moved at least a half a degree, and a half a degree is a lot. It would be way out of that hole, way out of that hole. Okay. A half a degree is, 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 it's huge. Um, and it didn't. So maybe they tore it down because this is rock solid evidence, pun intended, um, <laughs> of a non moving earth. This is absolute proof. And now it's gone. Wow. Now it's gone. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that was, I, I thought that was so, really important. To getting cover. back Thank to the motion, getting back to the motions. This is the hypersonic sled track. Google it because I don't have sound on here. One day, maybe I will. Um, <laughs> um, and it's going by a Mach 8.6. Watch it again, right? The sound is, is it's like shocking, right? This thing is going by a Mach 8.6. You have to believe, if you believe we live in that heliocentric system, that we are spinning. No, no, we are orbiting the sun 10 times faster than that, okay? We're orbiting the sun 10 times faster than that, and we're chasing the sun at 100 times faster than that. So think of this globular, water-covered ball, air adjacent to a vacuum, impossible, flying through the Earth's space in two different directions while spinning faster than the speed of sound, and nobody can notice or measure any of this, right? Right. But when we go out into nature, we see things like this. This lake is hmm. going 10 times faster than that in one direction, a hundred times faster than that in another direction, and it's spinning faster than the speed of sound. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Globers call us retards. Okay. I'm bringing back the word retarded because once you are shown this information, you're retarded if you don't see it. Mm. Your brain has been retarded. They've retarded the growth of our brain. They've put us in the heliocentric matrix so we can't use our imagination to see farther, right? Our imagination creates this world. Our imagination is what creates our reality, but they've capped it. They put it into a globe. Remember the Truman Show? Truman goes, I want to be an explorer. And the teacher pulls down the Mercator map, goes, oh, Truman, everything's been discovered. You know, there, there's <laughs> nothing else to discover right? Because we're on a globe. Well, what? I think there's more lands. I think there's, <laughs> now again, anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, you know, biblically, some biblical people will say, well, God only talks about the earth and the dome and that's it. And there's nothing else. Well, that's, I think that's limiting God. I think that's limiting what you're aware of in the Bible and, and lots of the hidden books um, that you're unaware of. Um, I think it fits with God's word very well that there are many houses, many houses. There's a, there's a Bible verse like Jesus has many houses, Right? Sure. Maybe this is just one of the one of the houses. Okay. Hey, Dave. What what, what about? I don't know if you're prepared to talk about this, but but I, another big one that really really got me looking into this was was the moon. And allegedly, we've been to the moon in this 1969, 71, 72, 
And, and then we just never went back again. I, I don't know if you have anything to talk about that, but to me, people say, well, of course this is all bogus because we've been to the moon and we've looked back. Well, I don't know, have we? Yeah, so Rob Skiba, who you mentioned earlier, um, the NASA says they don't have any, they admit that all the pictures are composites, except the one that was taken from the moon, where you got the moon, right? And you have, you have on the horizon of the moon or just above it is the earth. Well, all of the Apollo landing spots, okay? All of the Apollo landing spots are mapped on what we see. So these are all the Apollo landing spots. And if you were standing here on the moon, where's the earth? Is it on your horizon? No, it's over your head, okay? How can you hmm. take a picture of the sun in the sky at noon and show the horizon in the picture? You can't do it. Hmm. This is basically, if you're on any one of these spots, well, th this is the view from earth. The sun is between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. In, in the sky above them. The earth would be between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. if you look at it, you know, like, like we see the sun. And uh, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. They show it to us like this, okay? Rob Skiba took this picture off of NASA's website, put it into Photoshop, cranked up the levels, and there was a box around the earth. It I've was seen that. Yes. It was crappily pasted in. <laughs> it was crappily pasted in. They never, they never thought we'd have Photoshop 30 years later. Maybe. Or the, the guy that did it, you know, didn't tell them what a shitty job he did, didn't even know how to make a ping, PNG out of it and, and post it in there properly. Um, there, there's all sorts of, all sorts of issues. But Dave, in what, in what other situation do we discover something like America and then just never come back? We, we went to the moon in the early 70s and then... We don't have we don't have massive bases up there. We we haven't colonized it. We just well, never went back. And then a couple of my favorites, NASA says, well, we we lost all of that. We lost all of that research. We we lost all of that science. We we could go back in an instant, but we lost it all. <laughs> and, then, and then you got these Van Allen radiation belts. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but I, I don't believe NASA knew about those in the 60s and 70s. Then they were discovered, and they're apparently incredibly toxic for anyone traveling through them. And, and so you say, well, how did we go through those back in the 60s and 70s? Well, we didn't know about them back then. So it was okay. You just start to look at this stuff and it, it almost becomes laughable. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is completely and totally, totally laughable. This went to the moon. It's a tin this, can. Yeah, this is a little more technologically you know, built. This, I mean, this is ridiculous, right? Tin can, I think can is more sturdy than this thing. This is paper mache, tin foil. Curtain rods, it's absolute insanity. When you when you actually look at the the stuff that about the moon, um, it's it's crazy. In the in the app here, if we go to the moon lander, I can show you a little better here. Look mm. at this thing. Look at this thing, right? These little valves and stuff. Like uh, where's the rock? The, the the I mean, there's little rockets on these things. The, oh yeah, this right here, this little jet. This is how it maneuvers in space. This little thing. I mean, look at it. It's a bunch of little <laughs> cups, like little trophy cups glued to a box. I mean, look at the look at the work here. Would you get in this thing if I told you I was going to submerge it in a lake? No, you wouldn't. No. You'd be dead. This is yes. like a homeless tweaker shelter, right? <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. And now this thing is going to take off and reconnect with the orbiter, all right? Absolute and total insanity, right? Look at the, this is the rover. Right, this thing came out of that thing. This is a little Jeep body. Look at these lawn chairs. These are lawn chairs, <laughs> okay? And, and look at this, that's an umbrella, okay? Well, look at, well, I, go, next time you see like a, a local news team doing a live coverage with their big satellite truck, they got, a, they got a big metal dish, probably 15 feet wide on the roof, you know, beaming the live signal back to the radio station four blocks down the road. Okay, or four miles down the road, whatever it is. Okay, and this thing did it from the moon. <laughs> exactly. Well, I guess as as Elon Musk says, you you know it has to be real because it looks so fake. <laughs> you can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, well, a good good point, Dave. We beamed all this stuff back in the sixties and seventies. Meanwhile, I have I have magnitudes more computing power in my phone right now than they had in all of in all of NASA back in the sixties and seventies. And they were they were they were just beaming this stuff from the moon to the earth and to the shuttle and everywhere else. Are you are you kidding me? Let, let me ask a question. 
You ever fly in an airplane and see your house from the when you're coming into your home airport? Sure. And uh, what do you yell at the person that you don't know next to you uh, very excitedly? Uh, yeah, right. You pointed out. Look, look, that's my house. Well, yeah. these guys that just got back from the moon, don't they look excited? Okay. Um, on the moon, the entire, entire um, model, the entire transcript of everything they said should be holy effing ass. Look at the friggin' earth. Oh my God, look, here's America. Oh my God, look at that storm. Oh my God, isn't that beautiful? Look at the earth. Never once did they say earth. Never huh. once did they say, look at the earth. Never once did they really take a picture of the earth like that, except a fake one. Um, they didn't talk about it. They go, oh, look at this rock. And look, let's play golf. And uh, let's do dune buggy. Let's, the, let's make 360s on our dune buggy. Okay? Are you kidding me? They're on a rocket that, ne- that the rocket engine for the LEM never was tested on earth. And, and, and they're, like, I'd be crapping my pants. Supposedly, they were crapping their pants. Um, <laughs> And, and, and thinking, like, am I ever going to get out of here? And, you know, personally, I don't think that people can survive away from the earth. We're connected to the, this is an electrical system. We're electrical beings. We're connected to this earth. We need companionship. Think of this loneliness, being a, far away from everybody, away from the earth in the middle of nowhere. I don't think the human body can function, right? I don't, you know, the, the high altitude tests that they did in the 60s, the, the, the test pilots were talking about, passing out, being able to see through their eyelids, not being able to remain conscious at these elevations and stuff, even with air, you know, with oxygen and everything. I think that we're part of this electrical system and that we have to be here on the earth plane to, to um, experience this physical simulation that we're in. Wow. Well, uh, Dave, I know I'm going to get comments if I don't go back to this. You said, remind you about Polaris. Did you have another comment about that? Anything else to talk oh, about Okay, let's talk about the size of Polaris, right? So I'm going to do some math. Really easy. Anybody that can't follow this know that the school system has done their job. They've made you really dumb. Okay. So the earth is a, um, giant, the, the sun is a giant ball next to a tiny earth. So if we brought the model down to um, one of those big yoga balls, the earth would be a BB or a marble next to it. Right. Mm-hmm. Imagine if I took the sun and I put it just a mile over your head, the actual sun, just a mile over your head at 12 noon. Well, You'd be like the BB, like this close to that ball. So it would, the, the whole thing would fill the sky. Your entire sky would be the sun, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the sun, so the, 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 um, the sky would look basically like that. The whole sky would be the sun, right? Mm-hmm. And then we move the sun uh, eight light minutes away. What's a light minute? The distance light travels in one minute, okay? 1,186,000 mm-hmm. miles a second times eight light minutes equals 93 million miles. We move it 93 million miles away and it's the size of a coin held at arm's length. You with me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am. What happens if I double that distance? Uh, should How much smaller would the sun get? Remember, it went from the small? entire sky right. to the size of a coin. How much smaller would it get? Uh, maybe you couldn't see it. Okay, so that's um, eight and eight, 16, we'll round down 15 light minutes away. Uh, double that. So it's four times away. It's a light half hour. Double that again, eight times. It's a light hour. Could you see it at a light hour? I, per, I Hel- don't Hel- think so. No. Scientifically provable, in ignoring the brightness issue, which we don't even have to get into yet. Um, it's scientifically too small for your eye to resolve at one light hour away. Polaris, which we all can see with our naked eye, is 48 times bigger than our sun, they tell us. Okay. So what's an equivalent distance that we could not see Polaris? Well, one hour, we can't see the sun. Magnitude's too small. 48 times bigger. So 48 times one hour is two light days away. We scientifically know that we can't see Polaris at Mm. two light days away. Well, could we see it at a light week away? No. No. Times that times 52. How many? Wait. 52 weeks in a year? 52 weeks in a year. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my cards mixed up with my months, with my weeks. Times that 52 times farther, that's a light year. You think you can see it then? Hell no. Ridiculous. Absolutely not even any question whatsoever. They tell us Polaris is 433 light years away. Ridiculous. Okay. Everything we know is based on these distances and they keep, and recently, they, they just said, hey, you know what? We might be wrong. Polaris might be 100 light years closer than we thought. Oh, that's a little factor right there. 
okay? <laughs> and, and people are like, oh, a light year. A light year doesn't sound that far. A trillion miles. The closest star, the closest star, not Polaris, the closest star is four and a half light years, not 233, four and a half light years away. That's 25 trillion miles. A trillion miles is unfathomable. One trillion, not 25 trillion, right? Have you, have you heard my, uh, the question, how long is a trillion seconds? No. How long is a trillion seconds? If you guess it within a week, I'll give you a big one. <laughs> a trillion seconds. Uh, yeah. How quick. about 100 years? Very, very close. 31,000 years, okay? <laughs> so, now let that sink in. One trillion seconds is 31,000 years. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. These <laughs> numbers that they're talking about in impossible space are mm -hmm. ridiculous. I just mm -hmm. proved that that light we see that is not the size or the distance that they tell us. Therefore, everything else is off the table. All of space is off the table because space is scientifically impossible. Well, right? I mean, how about that? How about that picture? Just just that picture you have up on the screen. If if something is ninety three million miles away, it's coming at you in a straight line. How are those rays all breaking off into a circular pattern? Look at that. Right. Right. Wow. Yeah, it, yeah. Unless, it's, unless it's a lot closer than we've been told, huh? Well, you know, the whole Aristophanes thing where, um, you know, he said uh, he measured the sticks and shadows and, and whatnot, but no one has ever seen um, parallel rays. Nobody has ever seen parallel rays. They always come in crepuscular. Well, do the math. Go follow them up. Where's the sun? It's right up there. Look at that. I don't believe that the sun is a physical object that we can see. And I believe as you go higher and higher in an airplane, you're going to see the sun go higher and higher because you see it based on your position where it's manifesting. That's a whole other thing. We don't know what it is. It's not 93 million miles away. We can just prove that. And then you have a problem with the inverse square law of light. Every time you double the distance to something, it's one quarter of the brightness because light spreads out. And for it to spread out, it means it has to get thinner and dimmer, right? Because if I have a light here, if I, if I put it in a, in a room one square foot long and I have a light in the middle, the brightness on those walls is going to be different than if I put that in a, a mile square foot box with that little right. light. That light might not even make it to the edge of the box. It gets mm -hmm. thinner and thinner and thinner, right? Right, yes. That's a little experiment you could do. Get a small box, a bigger box, a bigger box, and a bigger box, and then hold a light bulb in the middle of it, and then get a light meter and read the wall on each box. Each box, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And that's how you would see it. It would be dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Well, the moon, for us to see it at the brightness we see it, from 100 miles away where the astronauts took the famous picture of the dusty, dirty gray rock they say is the moon, it would have to be 60 plus times brighter than we see the sun from Earth. For us to see it at the brightness that we see it, when we see it. Wow, wow. Really, really mind blowing. And you know, I know, I know you, you, you have a biblical view of things now, Dave, it sounds like, but you did it when you started and you don't like to spend a lot of time on that. I, I, I think that's wise and, and it helps you uh, get this message out to more people. But the Bible says God put two lights in the sky. He put the sun as, as the bigger light and he put bigger a lesser light. light, the moon. Yes, right. and, and, and so that, that tells you right there uh, in the first few, verses of Genesis that number one, the moon emits its own light. Number two, you probably can't land on it. And, uh, and so you just go from there. And, and oh, by the way, planets never mentioned once other than the word planet. I, and I don't know, I, I'll probably get this wrong. Do you know the, the actual meaning of the Greek word planet? I, I think it's something like liar or, or false teacher or something like that. Yeah, in the Bible. It, and it's also plain with a T at the end, mm. plain, mm. earth plain. Um, and they used to be called wandering stars until not that long ago, okay? So, again, there's so many, you know, for those of you that are listening that are freaking out, what about eclipses? What about seasons? What about time zones? It's all explained in the app. It's all explained in the app, okay? And, um, and there's, there's a lot. We, we wanted to do a, a one-hour interview. Just open up the topic. We, we may have Dave on again. I, I think this has been a lot of fun. I, I could do a bunch of these. This is this is tremendously fun for me. I, if, if everybody enjoys this, we may have him back on and dig into some of those deeper topics because there is a lot. And by the way, I, no, nobody has this all figured out yet. I, uh, Rob Skibo always used to say, "Well, you you've had two thousand years to work on your globe globe map. You know, we just started this about ten years ago, digging into this and researching. So give a little time, and, and there's a lot still to be figured out. But but there are a lot of great answers. 
I, I want to end, Dave, with with the the biggest question of all. I think, and, and we we've touched on it a bit before, but I think this is this is for me the perfect way to end this. And I think a lot of people probably have this question because you said you get this a lot. But when you start asking questions and you you show maybe those those emergency landing maps, I think that's one of the best ones. I mean, just that book alone, like you said, put it on the coffee table. That probably that probably starts the conversation right there. But when you see that, and when when that makes so much sense, those pictures, and you can't, you don't have an immediate answer. One of the most common responses and the most common, I'll call it a defense mechanism is to say, why would they lie about this? What's, why, why in the world? Why spend all this time? What does it matter? It doesn't matter. Why, why does it matter where we live? If it's a globe or if it's a, if it's a flat still plane. And I, I, want, I want you to give the answer. To me, I think the answer is it all of a sudden, a lot of stuff goes out the window. Evolution goes out the window. You immediately have a creator that made this place. That is undeniable. You've got a dome over it. The creator, instead of being out in space somewhere that you can't see, you're never going to run into, uh, he's immediately close. He, he's here. And, and it, 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 all of a sudden, the Bible makes a lot more sense. And so to me, that's, that's the answer. When, when, when you go to infinite space and you go to infinite time and we're just a blue dot out in the middle of nothing, it all feels a little hopeless and purposeless. And, and so then just do whatever you want. But if you realize that this place is actually intentionally made by a creator with a dome over it, and you're in the dome, that, then everything changes. So g- give me your answer. So, you know, there's two answers, which are really one answer. They're hiding more land and they're hiding the creator. Well, the creator created the creation. So you're hiding the creation. You're hiding the creator. There's a verse in the Bible that basically says, um, once you see my creation, you can no longer deny my existence. And that's what the God-hating rulers of this world um, want. They don't want you in a, a situation where you can't deny the creator. They hate the creator. You know, it's God, creator, over man, over government. Government has already climbed on top of man, and they're trying to t- cli- climb on top, top of God. They're removing mm-hmm. God from the, from the situation, from the from the equation. They're removing anyone that believes God from the military. They don't want anybody believing God that's in the military, right? And they're using, you know, that whole religious exemption thing. Um, they're, they're hiding the creator. They don't want you to know that you're at the center of creation, that you're not spinning out of control, lost in space with no control, that you are in control. Nobody has control over you except in your imagination. And they control that with the television, the tell lie vision, which induces fear false evidence appearing real on the news, which is steering your mind, North, East, West, South news. Okay. They're steering your mind with fear, with nonsense, right? There's so much that you discover once you understand that the world is not a globe. The shape has nothing. It doesn't matter. It's the lie that matters. It's it's about depowering you and allowing them to control you. The good news is the creator has made us in a world of free will where nobody is allowed to take that from us but they are allowed to fool you if they tell you what they're doing and you're too stupid to notice it or to say no. The thing is people go, well, what can I do? I'm, I'm nothing. I still have to go to work. Well, you can do plenty. You can unplug from the matrix. You can stop listening to them. Yeah, we still have to play in their stupid monetary system. Get off their monetary system. Start using cryptocurrency, privacy cryptocurrencies, not their cryptocurrencies, okay? Start trading with friends. Start thinking bigger, start understanding your true power. Like, like I, I, I had my own business. I walked away from it all. I had created my whole life. I worked at getting this and then I walked away from it all. Right. And that's the craziest thing, but guess what? It's my mission. It, it, you know, it was given to me because, because I allow it, I allowed it to come in. I use my imagination. Right. And so that's what they don't want. They don't want you to know that this is a spiritual war. They don't want you to know that there's much more to this place. Imagine this. Imagine if you had something the size of a roll of quarters that will heat your house, however warm you want it, turn into a sauna for the next hundred years and you never have to replace it. And imagine you've had another thing the size of a roll of quarters that would power your house and your car for a hundred years. Or if your car could run on water, well, you can't patent water and you can get it anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they can't have that. They, They don't want that. Right. So why does it matter? Because they're hiding technology. All of our tax dollars are going to technology that's not for us. It's for them. Okay. For them. Well, that's all another show. Okay. <laughs> and, and so 
So why, so why it matters, bottom line is it matters more than anything you know. All of the nonsense that's going on in the world, all of the, the ridiculous nonsense, and you know what I'm talking about, is because you're lost in space, spinning out of control, and you don't know who you are. Oh, how, how perfect. I, I'm going to put you on the spot really quick. I don't know if you can find it, but you, you are very good with that app. Do you have that video? If we are on a, on a flat earth with a dome over it, it would, you would sure think that we'd want to go test it and go look up there. Do you have that video? And I don't know who it was, but someone went up there and, and they've got a video and then all of a sudden the, the whatever plane they're in just stops. And, and you, do you know the one I'm talking about? So you're talking about the, um, the it's called um, the Go Fast Rocket. So yes. this was this so yes. this was an amateur rocket. And by the way, the NASA rockets, SpaceX rockets, it's all baloney. Sometimes they launch something, sometimes they don't. That's a whole other thing. But this was an amateur rocket, took off in Arizona, and they gave us an uninterrupted view down, and there's also a sideways view. It went up 73 miles. And again, there's no sound on this, but if you get the one with the sound, it goes kerplunk and it stops, it stops spinning all of a sudden. And Look it hits that. something. Okay. So and and so that's interesting. Right, it hit something at 73 miles, and we have other whistleblowers from NASA and stuff that are saying, "Yeah, that's where the firmament starts. It starts to get thicker, and then it becomes solid." But look, Ooh. this is the moon. Whoa. That's the moon, right? Horizon's looking a little flat to me, but more importantly, that's the moon. All right, so let's take a look. Wow, this the moon. This was took off in Arizona, and it went straight up, and the moon was over Australia. Well, if the, if the earth was a basketball, that rocket was a half a millimeter above the top of the basketball and the moon was below the basketball. How wow. do we see the moon? How do we see the moon? Look at okay. that. Amazing. Yeah. So, so again, <laughs> there's so much evidence that the globe is a lie. It's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. It's beyond, it's beyond ridiculous. And there's so much evidence that that we can see too far, that, you know, th that space is scientifically impossible. Like I, I showed you before for a moment, the, um, the map, which I like, and now whether it's real or not, doesn't matter. This is scientifically possible. We live here, this is our pond, right? And uh, the, this, this ring right here, which is hard to see, that's the Antarctica. Then there's more water out here. And then there's other ponds. These could be a couple thousand miles away. You know, that distance between these two right here might be a couple thousand miles. So this is huge, right? Wow. And these are other worlds. now. They're scientifically possible because we're in a contained system, right? Maybe there's a super dome and we have all our little energetic domes for each of our worlds. Who knows? But this is scientifically possible. Outer space is off the table. It's Narnia. It's ridiculous. Okay. Wow. This well, is the outer mind. space. We're here. All of this is the outer space crossing the plane. Okay. Everything is here. Why is our solar system flat? That's the model of flat because the lights that we see are circling above the flat earth. Hmm. Wow. Well, that is, that is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, Dave, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Really enjoyed this one. This is, this is a first for, for our channel, for our audience. And I, I think this is going to really uh, get a lot of discussion going. And, and if, if you come back, we'd, we'd love to have you back on. So we'll set that up at some point in the future if we can make it happen. But this has been a blast. Thank, thanks for coming and thanks for making the time. And uh, uh, before we go, his, his website's on the screen, flatearthdave.com. Everything that we've talked about, all the videos, it's all on that site and you can, you can find it all there. So just go there. It, our guest today has been Dave Weiss. And thank you so much, Dave, for coming on. I'll give you the last word. That's it. You know, don't, again, don't believe anything I say. FlatEarthDave.com, tons of resources there. Check out the app, get the app. And, and you know, if you're like, okay, I thought you were crazy at the beginning. You made some good points. What, what do I do now? I still have to go. I'm busy. I got to go to work. Okay, <laughs> get the app. And every morning when you're having your coffee or your breakfast, watch the daily video. Click, boom. And just watch. It's short. I usually do short ones during the week, longer ones on the weekend. Just watch that video. And then watch the videos that follow it because those are videos that I've selected, not YouTube. Right. If I sent you like, hey, Dave, how does circumnavigation work? And I sent you a video on circumnavigation. The next video that comes up is going to be a NASA video. OK, it's going to be a nonsense video to distract you. Right. But in the app, the next video is a video that I selected. OK, that we selected. Right. Perfect. It's a video that's going to educate you. And again, don't believe anything. Test it yourself. I'm just showing you the doors that are surrounding you. 
that are waiting to be open, and the app is the key to unlock them to get to that information because you're going to be looking for the key forever, and Google's not going to serve it to you. No, it's not. Well, there you go, everybody. Dave, thanks for coming on, and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, man. Thanks. See you. Thanks. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. I guarantee you they'll be the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. I do not like my sheets. I love my Giza Dream Sheets. Call or go to MyPillow.com right now to take advantage of Mike's limited time offer. Use the promo code on the screen and when you buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets, get another set absolutely free. Choose from a variety of colors in solid stripes and new flannel sheets. This offer expires on May 9th, 2021, so don't wait. Buy one set of Giza Dream Sheets and get a second set free. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.